Coming to you live from the Stream.TV studios in Hollywood, California, Pensado's Place is brought to you by Vintage King, The Blackbird Academy, Avid, Recording Connection, Studio 202, Slate Media Technologies, and Audio Technica. We've got a pop master in the house, lots of Blackbird activity with that campaign, a brand new guest ITL, and Lord God, the Pensado Awards is getting close. Stay tuned. You're at the place, baby. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Oh, Herb, thanks for the pop master comment. That was really sweet My of you. My pleasure, man. I needed something else to describe you by after 30 years. I was running out of stuff. So does that work for you? Yeah, that worked good. Cool. I mean, I hope our guest doesn't mind me usurping <laughs> his it. Yeah. nom de plume. Well, that's what we do weekly. I did, went French on you there. Got gotcha. you. Very good. Man, take this away from me, man. We got so much to talk about. <laughs> we got a lot going on. Off. Should we just get yeah, to it? Yeah, it's good. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Great to see you, as yeah. always. Yeah. As you view this, we are around 20-some days away from the Pensado Awards. So it's absolutely bananas around here, but we, we kind of like it bananas. Like and subscribe, if you would. We are in striking distance of about 100,000 subs. That is a great step for all of us. Thank you for that from Dave and I. To our amazing, amazing group of sponsors, Vintage King, owner Mike Nera is getting close to a blessed event with the pending birth of his little one. We'll report back on that. VK is just aces would, would for us. Would that be Vintage Infant? Vintage Prince? V vintage Prince. That would be the joke I'm okay. looking for. <laughs> okay. We'll work on that a little Damn. bit and, and we'll revisit it. And, you know, we can edit. So Sometimes that's my good... medical issues just resurface <laughs> just for no came reason. Rushing, you know? They came rushing right up. Uh, the Blackbird Academy has been rocking great stuff with us. We have guest ITLs from that great shop. The live experience campaign is in full swing. Here's the details. That's where the two of you over the course of six different cities can get the real front of house live experience. You can see those cities right here. You see them posted right there. Here's what you get to do. You meet John McBride at Soundcheck. You observe how a real Soundcheck is handled for both the house and the artist. You'll come back that evening, sit with John while he actually does front of house mixing. Now, he said to us as an aside, he might have to go to the little boy's room or something and let somebody at the controls for a second. That's a big shot for somebody, so yeah. you might want to take advantage of that. It's an unparalleled experience from a real master. To enter, pretty simple. Email karma, that's C-A-R-M-A, at the Blackbird Academy, karma at the blackbirdacademy.com. Enter your name, and they'll get back to you. I would say get your emails going now. This is a great one-to-one -one experience in a field with real substantive job growth. Um, you want to pay attention to that stuff. And that's not all for Blackbird. They've got their July class, it still, has, it still has some seats open, and that is for both studio and live. If you're a prospective student or parent making a decision, do yourself a favor and reach out to Karma to investigate. You owe it to yourself to at least do the due diligence, then you can make a decision. Uh, it's a phenomenal learning experience. Dave just went down and taught, you'll work with superstar teachers, you'll work with superstar artists, the curriculum is major, the placement service is major, it's really phenomenal. Um, and then you will have conferred upon you both their reputation and pedigree, and it doesn't get much higher. It makes you a candidate for employment, and plus your knowledge curve will be off the case. W would you vouch for that? 100%, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I learned, and I was, you know, I was just there like four or five days, and mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Um, so, you know, Dave and I highly recommend that you reach out and do that, and then you can make your decision from there. Um, as we speak to you behind these cameras, the Audio Technica brass are in the, are there in the house. Uh, yeah, we are in planning mode for you guys. Um, what do Dave and I like about these guys? Plenty. Let, 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 let's start with the product. In my house, uh, my office, in Dave's studio, their headphones are literally staples. The M50Xs are just sick. They're comfortable. They're accurate sonically. The great bottom. They're 40 and 50 mic series, built like tanks, ridiculous quality, smartly priced, just top-notch stuff. Um, and for Dave and I, as you guys have gotten to know us now over, God, we're in our fourth year, amazing. Um, we often say you can tell the quality of the product often by the quality of the people. Uh, and these are people Dave and I truly like and mm -hmm. why we made the decision when they were interested that they were the right fit for us. So what we're going to do, we are going to go out to lunch, 
we're going to try to charge the lunch to their expense account, and then we're going to plan some great stuff to come back to you we'll guys. We'll do an layer on that. We'll do an into the layer on how you get a sponsor <laughs> yeah. to pay for lunch. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. We'll do that. Uh, so back to you more soon from uh, Audio Technica. Team Avid, shout out to Tony Caridi. Got a nice note from him. Oh, um, oh and, and that was after a mention from our guy, Nick Maseed, over at Forbes, who's also in the house. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to Collier also for stepping up on something Dave needed yeah. for stepping up and thanks, stepping out. Spring. Avid, great job. Talked to Stephen Slade earlier today, and <laughs> he promised Dave and I that he'll unleash us soon. So in the interim, check out Raven 2, a brilliant piece of gear designed to consolidate your work, make it more efficient, got a bunch of workflow solutions, no compromise in quality of sound. You already know what slate materials stand for. Fab is an incredible designer. Um, and we draw closer and closer to where Steven and one of our esteemed sponsors are gonna roll out something special. And I, like I said, Steven is gonna let us unleash soon, but we're kind of excited about it, right? <laughs> Steven. I love me some Steven Slate. Lord, do we ever. Do we ever. The product is going to be yeah. sick, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and finally, our good buddies at Recording Connection with their mentor-to-mentee one-on-one philosophy. This is learning where you live, where it's really cost-efficient. Um, you get to stay kind of in your area. This is a very successful program. Next week, they put the, we put together an ITL with the legendary Chung King Studios. We'll run that next week. The Recording Connection boys pulled that together for that for us. You don't want to... You don't want to miss that one, correct? I didn't miss it. I was part of it. It yeah, was great. It, and it's so yeah, hilarious. John King is like, um, who? he's tiring, but it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much. I mean, that man's a fountain of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, I didn't know he had such a big grasp on room acoustics. That's really? Just, yeah, no, he's, he's... Oh, cool. That's his thing. That's oh, why all his studios it. sound so good. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, cool. I, I, I think you can that. enjoy it. All right, moving on, gang. The Pensado words are drawing close. Uh, it's exciting and scary and insane, and the Pensado teams are working like maniacs to make this happen. We're hearing from more and more pros. We're hearing from folks who are flying in all over the place. I just sent a letter to the embassy in Uzbekistan who have people who want to fly over. Um, tickets are going out the door. Um, you can see from the sponsor list right here how many folks are stepping up to the plate to make this a special event for you. Um, amazing, our support is really amazing. Let's talk nominations for a second. They're in. You can see them here. As discussed last week, we're gonna leave two, submission, two categories open for submissions because we started a little bit late. That's the Unique Project Studio category and the Air Award. On the Project Studio category, go to our Facebook page, you'll see Dave's picture. Right under the picture to the right, there's a box that says studio. Click it, follow instructions to upload pictures there. For the AIR Award, AIR an acronym for best for assistant intern or runner, go to pensadoawards.com. Our man Chevy arranged it so that if you just click on the category, you'll be able to submit. So one more week for just those two, everything else is in, and then we are locked. Yeah. So to see the nominations, you can go to a number of places, like PensadoAwards.com, our site at PensadosPlace.tv, or our Facebook page. Take your pick. The details, June 28th, Fairmont Hotel, Santa Monica, California, one block from the beach. The host, Chris Lord Alge, Marcella Arequia, Young Guru, and Lisa Loeb. The dress, your version of rock and roll fun. Ladies, make it hot. Deliver it with some style and swagger. The after party, DJed by Young Guru in the Pensado Playhouse. The info, everything is at PensadoAwards.com. Go there for tickets, hotels, or just to generally say how much you love Dave and I, because we, we, we need that periodically, right? Hourly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the requirements are pretty simple. That you celebrate, have fun, be part of this awesome, incredible community that you've helped co-author. The tagline, booties bumping, mascara melting. Let me just say that again. When this baby's over, booties bumping, mascara melting. Cannot wait to see you there. It's going to be great. Love you. David P., introduce our ITL. Uh, we're going to continue on our series with John McBride talking about some vintage microphones at Blackbird Studios.
Hello, I'm John McBride. I'm sitting in the A-Room at Blackbird Studios in Nashville, Tennessee, along with some of my best friends, these microphones. Today we're going to talk about a Neumann U67, one of the good guy mics. The 67 is a three-pattern microphone, the normal three, Omni, cardioid, and figure of eight, all switchable right here on the microphone. Um, I had four of these mics modded to a one micron diaphragm. I think out of the factory, there are six micron mylar diaphragm. The one microns have an amazing low end and high end. I don't know how it works, but we tried it. We loved it and we liked it so much. We did three more microphones that way. My favorite use is on horns. I love a 67 in the Omni position on horns. I love these microphones. You can use them on anything. They, uh, they sound great on, on anything you put them on, generally speaking. This is a Neumann 269. As you can see, physically it's very similar, a different grill pattern for sure. But the main difference between a 269 and a 67 is the uh, 269 has an AC701 tube, which is a superior tube to what's in the 67. I love a 269 because it has probably half an octave of high end more than the two than the 67 does so the 269 we'll, we'll use it mainly on uh, vocals acoustic guitar i haven't tried it on horns but with that extra high end it probably would work against you the 67 sounds so perfect on horns that uh, i can't imagine a mic sounding better than what it does both these mics are large diaphragm condensers one of my favorite combinations in the world they just sound wonderful. 67s get used on vocals, so do 269s. 67s are probably used on as many different instruments in the studio as any microphone out there. They're one of the good guy mics, and I love them. So I hope in your career you get to use a lot of 67s and 269s, and you can hear the difference for yourself. They're a great microphone, both of them. And I hope you have fun with them. So. All you other microphone freaks out there, I'll see you next time. Thanks for uh, checking it out. Take care. God, what a pleasure it is to welcome such a talented engineer. Yeah, um, my buddy. Huh? My buddy. Yeah. Uh, Miles Walker is back in Atlanta, and Dave has been pining to get Miles on the show for a while, and we have. So, uh, Miles, good to see you. You there? Herb, fantastic to see you. Dave, a pleasure. Miles, what's up? What's up, guys? Cool. Go ahead. Fire you away. had like a British accent there, Miles. What's up with that? Well, maybe it's because of all the Brits I've been working with recently. It's rubbing off, but I'm Southern to the core. So, Like who? Who have you been working with? Well, actually, there's a lot of Sony UK acts, like um, I Am A Camera, I'm working on them, and uh, Tanika, I had even got to do some stuff with uh, Shaw, Naughty Boy, some of his stuff. Very well. cool. Are, are, you, are they traveling to you, or are you going to them to do that? It's been a little bit of both. We met up in Los Angeles, and Shaw and I worked together for a little while, but also sometimes they just send files, and uh, you know, I'll work Go from work. a studio here. Yeah. Exactly. Just Absolutely. Like Go ahead, DP. Where's uh, um, Parhelion now? Where you where are you located? Well, actually, nowadays I'm at Silent Sound here in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and uh, Parhelion's right around the corner. Ralph and Ryan still doing their thing over there, but uh, TK and I worked put this place together back in October. So it's been a dream come true to be over here and working really hard. Tom Kidd is my guy. He's my guy. No um, doubt. Man, five number one records in one year. Um, that was a good year. That was a good year. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> it was a good year. I was, I was trying. To I think maybe you beat my record, but no, I think we're tied. Well, that's probably the only record we share. I think <laughs> it, I, I'm sure you're lapping I, me on some others. <laughs> hey, man, um, one of the things that, that, that w whenever we talk, we tend to gravitate towards this subject, and, and I'd, like you, I'd like to share some of that with our audience, and that's uh, technical skills and creative skills, artistic skills is what you usually call it, um, we're not paid to turn knobs, we're paid for our creativity, right? Isn't that the way you put it the other day? Sometimes I think you get paid for expressing an expert opinion. And, you know, expert is relative in music because we all just do it because we love it. But hopefully 
as a mixer or an engineer, you come in contact with a lot more records than maybe an artist or a producer makes, mm -hmm. just strictly volume speaking. So it gets to the point where they might be asking you, what do you think about what I've done? And, you know, that's part of your job, too, is to be honest, but, you know, find the best parts and really accentuate that. And maybe if it's something's not a really strong idea, maybe you can help them get away from it before it becomes a problem for the record. I, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I, I would suggest that your opinions uh, are really valuable and that you, that you claim that. Because ultimately, for a creative person, the ultimate trust is to be able to go to somebody and get the truth. Yeah, and sure. and that's a valuable commodity Very that not valuable. everybody gets. Um, Good point. So um, I've seen people, and we've seen people literally relax because they could go someplace and be told that we actually went through that experience with Michael Jackson. Yeah, and the folks in the room were telling L.A. No, not that. Move that. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, <laughs> right? It was a really collaborative. <laughs> what me telling him that? Uh, there was a bunch of others though. Actually, it was. I don't remember. Uh, I take the fifth. That's not. That's a. That's a Chappelle reference in case. Obscure. Obscure. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, feet. <laughs> there you go. Wasn't that Very obscure? Good. Not that obscure. <laughs> There's an anecdote that you tell online, I forget, in one of the videos that you do, where you talk about um, the client coming in to do the mix, and, and, and you use the metaphor of driving a car. Do you remember that metaphor and, and how you used it? Sure. Uh, kind of. You have to acknowledge the fact that even you might put all your creative effort as an individual into a mix and you might try all these different ideas that you think are amazing. But if the client doesn't like it, you have to be able to get away from that because, you know, you're getting paid to drive the bus. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I know the car one that you're talking about. I like that Excellent. one, too, though. Right. And, you know, sometimes you just got to drive them where they want to go. But the, I think the car <laughs> story you're talking about is one that uh, one of my professors at school, uh, Carl Beatty, told me. And I thought it was really great because he was, this was a long time ago, you know, he was doing a mix and um, people kept asking him like, well, I don't know, what do you think? Should we, the snare be up, should the snare be down? What if we do a, a quarter dB up snare print and then a quarter dB? And he just, all these questions were coming at him and he says, do you drive a car? And they were like, what, what, what do you mean? He's, do you drive a car every day? And they go, yeah. It's like when you drive a car, you make a million decisions every day that literally affect someone's life. Am I going to speed up? Am I going to slow down in time? Am I going to run into this person? This is just making a record. Sometimes you need to make a decision and just stick with it. Ooh, Man, that's good so, analogy. So, so commitment is the, uh, the more I do this, the more I realize that just committing to an idea or a concept is, is probably the most valuable thing we can impart to the process. Um, we get, you and I both get so many uh, songs that, that, that have a lack of commitment. So, so you'll have 200 background vocals or you have like a right. 600 tracks of strings or something, you know? Um, hmm. what, what's, while we're on the subject, what, what's your opinion about um, a young kid going to school or just OJT? Um, should you, now you, we both, can, we both, can, we both represent both ends of that spectrum. I, I wish I'd gone to school. I know I would have been a better engineer had I gone to school, and, and that's one of my regrets in life. What, what's your take on school versus just going out and doing it? Well, I'm a big believer in education across the board. I mean, it doesn't have to be school. It just has to be learning and trying to be better at whatever it is you want to do. I was fortunate to go to a college for, uh, I went to Berkeley College of Music, and right. I studied the music production and engineering program, mm -hmm. which I'm a little biased, but I think is an excellent program. Absolutely. But I, but I think there's some other programs out there that are excellent. And I met people that were starting out their uh, career, same as me. And at Berkeley, it's a four-year program. And maybe at SAE and Full Sail and some of these other places, it's a one-year program. So I felt like I had a stronger foundation, but that could have been just a time based thing. You know, you can only learn so much in any amount of time. And they're trying to cram the same curriculums into two brains. It's very tough. But then once you get in the studio, you learn the really important stuff, the stuff that there is no substitution for. So what's better, having a strong foundation in school or more hands-on time in the studio? Mm -hmm. And maybe if you could put the two of them together, that would be the perfect education. You, you, so, know, you know, what's interesting about what you're saying is um, one of our sponsors, Recording Connection, they believe in sort of mentor to mentee, one-on-one -on -one teaching in the studio, 
that has a curriculum component to it, but it's not, it's not just that. And they, they think that that sort of application gets people up to speed faster. Mm -hmm. I, and, I, and I think we believe that that's a good thing. What do you think, Miles? Oh, absolutely. I totally um, agree with that sentiment because I think the best way to be great is to stand next to someone who's already great. Mm -hmm. There's so much that you just get through osmosis of being around somebody that's done it before or maybe they, you know, they're where you want to be. Because when you're starting out, even with, with the schooling, you don't even know what questions to ask. Yeah. So if you're just around that kind of environment, you can learn what to ask and steer your path a little bit better. And, and hence why Dave stays so close to me. I can tell. It's, it's very, true. it's very it's apparent. He, he thinks he's being funny, but it's just a hundred percent true. Yeah, because my mixes are incredible. They are <laughs> absolutely. They are <laughs> good. Uh, just the right amount of vermouth, the right, the right <laughs> pearl onion. Exactly. Everything is just absolutely. A little stir, just spot that, yeah, on. Yeah, a little debris at the top. You got that James Bond thing kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Gin or vodka. <laughs> 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 hey, Miles. Um, the, the internet is lighting up and, and on fire. I think the bandwidth, just re available bandwidth, just decreased because everybody's anticipating me asking you about your approach to vocals. Um, your sure. vocals are something that that I can't wait to hear on a record. By the way, the, fi the, the, the records that he had number ones with, he had three with Rihanna, one with Wiz Khalifa, and uh, one, one with Katy Perry. Nice. These were, these were big, big records. That's serious stuff. Um, I'm going to ask you about tracking in a minute, but uh, sure. in terms of in terms of your philosophy about vocals and 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 their place in the mix and how to work on them, take me from the process because you're 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 one of only a handful of guests I've had on that can that can say that you've tracked some of the biggest records in the world and then simultaneously mixed some of the biggest records in the world. Take me from start to finish what you're trying to accomplish in each part of the process, please. Well. When you have a really great vocal, so much of it is leaving it alone what's natural and great about the performance and correcting what was a little bit lacking. And I mean, that goes across the board from signal to how you record it, compression, you know, great mic and, you know, maybe pitch something like, does it need a little bit of pitch correction or a lot or whatever. But a lot of it is just getting the, the emotion and the essence of that singer and their version of the song. Because let's say they didn't write it, let's say a songwriter did it, there's a version of the song that they're used to, but now it has to become their own. So whatever's special about the way Rihanna twisted a little word or something like that, uh, you know, that's what you wanna leave in. You don't wanna shy away from that kind of stuff. That's so a, you think about that's that. A, that's a psychological skill that you have. In other words, you're, you're, you're kind of corralling that, that creativity and kind of focusing it into getting on an audio technical microphone this is, that'll totally do it but um sometimes it's that sometimes they need the push to go in the direction where you know they want to be other times it's getting as far away from it and letting them just try out ideas mm -hmm. and you stumble across magic that way yeah. sometimes great engineering is hands off all the way off yeah you know and you have to know great which which two are happening yeah, I think I think one of the subtle skills in engineering that's hard to teach is the concept that a good engineer just by his presence or her presence will provide such a perceived safety net that the artist feels free to try anything and we'll save them if it's bad. You know, we'll, so, we would never let something bad even exist for more than a minute. We'll erase it real fast in front of them just to make sure that they have the confidence in knowing they can try anything and no one will ever hear it except the good parts. Absolutely. You know, when they're comfortable, they can really open up and take it to the next level or try something they never even thought about doing. But they got to believe you, you know, believe in you. And, and ultimately, it, it's a bit it, a lot of the a lot of the fulcrum that everything swings on is trust. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. Like, oh, absolutely. Like your ability to trust that the artist is going to deliver is part of what allows you to do your thing. Mm -hmm. And the artist's ability to trust allows for those happy accidents or those tries that all of a sudden yeah. become magic and signatures on records. I, 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 I'm not a singer, but one of my pet peeves, back me up on this if you, if you feel like it, Miles, um, I hate it when the singer brings an entourage. The entourage is in the control room. Mm -hmm. They're laughing and giggling. The singer's out there singing and just assuming that they're laughing and giggling about the singer. Mm -hmm. And they're talking amongst themselves. And of course, everybody, every artist I know is just slightly a little bit paranoid. That's what makes them great. 
And that, that environment is, is so critical to control and, and not every person has the personality to do that. Um, uh, I, I, yeah, I completely agree. One of the things that I'm always very sensitive of if I ever enter that scenario is you might not be able to control what's going on behind you, but I always use a talkback foot switch. I'm uh -huh. a big fan of that. Because any kind of auto talkback scenario means as soon as the take is over, they're hearing all that laughter, all that so-and-so, and they're misinterpreting it just like you said, and it's something completely different. And I'm not a fan of the button talkback because I do a lot of editing and stuff with the vocals in between takes. That's good dead time for me to do engineering cleanup. So the foot switch is perfect because I still have control over it, but I can be like, hey, guys, give me a minute with the artist, and I can say something, and then they know what's going on is – just about them it's no misconception so mm. love I, I literally take a foot switch with me when i go to studios i don't usually work at oh cool i'll share one of my techniques with you i i, I think it's useful um control rooms are very well insulated and they'll heat up really fast so i i pretend like <laughs> i'm going to take a bathroom break i kick the temperature up to 85 i find a spot in the song that i can loop that just makes you want to just do this you know so it's like all out of time and stuff, and the room comes back 85. I can get it back down to 70 in about 10 minutes, and then the room's empty by the time I get so back. So you run them out? Yeah. Gotcha. Cool, cool. I didn't enter the layer on that. I don't know if you saw it. Um, I prefer the Honeywell thermostat, uh -huh. and, and, and I time it just. <laughs> you probably saw that, didn't you, Miles? You actually so, told me that the very first time I met you, and I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to use that. You call, you, you call that phase incineration? That <laughs> Maybe we can get you the, uh, the Nest app, you know, so you can control it from your smartphone. So yeah. you can just turn it up and while you're out the room. And I think it's a product line. Yeah. Talk to Apple. <laughs> well, exactly. Stuff, man. exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, sticking with vocals. So now we've got a vocal. We've got it recorded. You're mixing. Sure. Um, you, you have a masterful gift and use for delays. Describe to me um, how you would approach uh, the adding effects like delay on a vocal. And I know it's hard. Let, let's, let's pick a, give me a vocal that, that, that I would know and, and, and use that as an example of what you did. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, um, do you want something sung or something more even like rap or something like that? Sung, sung. Sung is good. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, geez, I, yeah, I don't know. You got me there. A kind um, of pop, maybe, or yeah. Well, with some of their stuff, you know, their so much of their sound is like the um, the dense, the gang nature mm -hmm. of the two girls singing together. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of uh, consistent throughout. So you want to honor somebody's signature sound. So like for that, it was a lot of slap delay as well as ping pong stuff, but very very short times so that you could get like an extra thickness. They do stack their vocals a lot, but also hyping it up a little in the hook is never gonna hurt anybody, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm. But um, a lot of the times I'll choose delay over something like reverb, and mm. that's something I feel like because of the shortcomings of in the box reverbs versus hardware units. Now I don't wanna get you know, too crazy about that there, but I think delay started coming in fashion when people started mixing in the box instead of on the desk because if you're on the desk, you probably have access to a 480 or a 960 or something really, really sweet. Mm -hmm. But when you go in the box, there's some great delays, fantastic plug-in delays. Give me, give me some favorites. I know you uh, like the Echoplex from UAD. Uh, yeah, I love that one a lot. You know, Echo Boy is also really nice. Yeah. Rest in peace, Echo Farm. Uh, I know that's like, you know, gone and it's really old, but I love the simplicity of it. I love the sound of it. It was great. But I'm, I'm AAX now too, so that's gone and mm. all sad. Mm -hmm. Wow, man! You know we ought to talk to uh, we ought to talk to you, AD, about reviving that algorithm for uh, that line six great. algorithm. It, it's, it's so simple. Like sometimes simple is great too when you're choosing a delay. So you can just get some things happening, and you know three knobs, awesome. You know that's really a, a great thing to just start trying out ideas. When when does the tempo influence and how much space you have between the words? Does that influence whether you would choose a sixteenth and eighth or a quarter note delay? Definitely, but you know, um, that's gonna be huge about like the kind of like what I'd call like the baseline delay, maybe the one that's like consistently going on the vocal throughout. Mm -hmm. You're gonna feel about the tempo, but then you also gotta look at the songwriting. Like, did they sh big, have big spaces in between phrases? Mm -hmm. And if they did, that lends itself naturally to some nice little throws there that might be a little bit longer. But 
if it's a very continuous phrase, you got to make shorter delay decisions because you certainly don't want it to get washy or overly filled up. I do this a lot. It seems like I hear, hear you doing it too. I, I, I'll have, I have three or four different delays set up and I'll use different tempos for different parts of the song, depending yeah. on. Uh, when you're doing a slap, I tend to move it some, I, 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 I tend to move it somewhere between 90 and 120 milliseconds. How do you, and then whatever feels good, that's what I leave. How do you determine a good slap? Or you have a number that you stick by? You know, I got a couple preset -y ones, but uh, a lot of times I'll just leave it somewhere around there, but instead of seeing how it fits in the song, I might EQ it afterwards to see how full it needs to be, or if I need to like thin it out up top, sometimes that can make it sound like nice and hefty. But if it's a really dense song, I'll go the other route and thin it out so it's more like a phasey kind of echoey thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Speaking of EQ, um, going back to, to our neophyte days, what are some of the concepts behind EQing? Um, I know that's a broad question, so I'll start it off. Sometimes I work on the low end to make that fit and to find a spot in the mix, and all the low end is just clouding up things that you're not going to, that, that, that you won't even hear the low end in the vocal anyway, but it's going to cloud things I need. What are some sure. concepts that you start with when you EQ a vocal? And, and do you start with the vocal first in the mix? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, your guest a few weeks ago, Leslie, that's who I worked with first. That was one of the first people I came to Atlanta and, and mm -hmm. studied with. So nice. care of the school of Leslie, which I am a big proponent of, I do all vocals a cappella first, completely. Oh, okay. And I make all the decisions for EQ and how that vocal should sound when it's a cappella. Now, you know, sometimes after you put everything back in the mix, you have to make some small adjustments. But I've always felt like if you go the other direction and mix the music and then put the uh, vocal on top and trying to fit it in, that's karaoke music. So, you know, you're not really doing the vocal <laughs> justice. When you when you when you're EQing at that point, you're are you EQing in solo mode or have you created a quick rough mix to EQ inside of to know how to EQ? How can you EQ in solo mode and know what, what you're gonna get? Well, I just think of like what's the best if there was nothing else around, if this was maybe maybe a piano or something like just that's providing harmony and just this vocal. How's the best this vocal could ever sound? And that's what I start, that becomes my foundation. And then I'll put in the drums and see where some masking has happened, especially in the low end, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then one by one, start adding in the more important instruments. And you know, that's when you're gonna really start seeing where the, the EQ frequencies start overlapping. And then it becomes a decision, it's like, do I wanna leave that vocal how I had it when I thought it was really beautiful and magic and make corrections over here in the music? Mm -hmm or what's more important, and then, you know, start taking stuff out the vocal. Give it a quick question, Miles. Um, the, given the kind of music you do or the kind of projects that come your way, do you find yourself tracking much or, you know, that, or that becomes sort of a lost art given the genre of stuff? I, used to, I love tracking. I just don't typically do it a lot anymore uh -huh. uh, just because people like to send me records to mix, which I'm very thankful for that too. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's something really awesome about being in the room when a song is getting born. Yeah. And like as a mixer, you just don't get to see the inside stories and all that kind of like effort maybe that the artist was going through to get that magic vocal. Mm -hmm. You just get it delivered to you. You're like, man, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you watch it happen, you appreciate the labor so much more. And there's so much fun in that about, and you, can, and you only get that when you're tracking. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's great. You know, I'll do whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. You know what? Um, you, you, you do have a good perspective on the tracking thing. Um, I, just, I just got back from Blackbird and tracked three songs, and I forgot how much influence you can have over the process when you're tracking. We think as a mixer we have a lot of influence, but I think, I think the, in the tracking process is probably where the most influence is. Would you say that's broadly, generally accurate? Absolutely. I was talking to talking this exact same fact with a friend of mine, Exit, who I think you guys oh, know. Oh, tell Exit sure. hello. That's right, and um, he says more and more with people spending more time on their rough mixes and staying in the box, they're making decisions in the tracking songwriting phase that they're really committed to. So records yeah. are kind of getting mixed from the back, and then once it gets time to actually mix it, we're just working within the confines of the decisions they've already made. Precisely. So 
Sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's problematic. But either way, it's just a part of, you know, the way record making is now. Yep. Yep. You know, that brings us to a point of, um, of sometimes our nemesis uh, demos, the, the rough kind of mm. quick reference mix that's, that's all energy and emotion and very little technical skills. But sometimes um, we live or die by those things. What's your, what's your concept behind and thoughts behind the rough mix? And should we, most rough mixes are what, 30 minutes an hour? Should we spend the same amount of time doing a final mix? Well, you, you probably can spend that amount of time and it would come out great. <laughs> but, you know, I might take a little bit longer. But whenever I get a project delivered to me, the first thing I ask is, how long have you guys had the rough mix? That's the first question I ask. And if it's three months or longer, they're getting a loud version of the rough mix. You know, that's <laughs> what's happening, no matter what. You know, that is, that's it. That's all you're getting. And, and, and you're going to love it. Yeah. But... You know, if they're like, yeah, you know, we, we did it last week or we did it like a month ago. I know I have a little bit of leeway to try out some ideas. Yeah. And to be fair, what I really will do is if they have done it, they have had the rough for like three months or longer. I'll do that. I'll just make a loud version of the rough mix. But then I'll make another version where maybe I try more creative drops. I completely change the reverb. I do some mutes in the bridge and I'll play them the loud rough. And if they're love it. And they're like, oh, we trust you completely. That's great. I'll be like, well, what do you think about this version? There you go. But I won't ever submit that one first because if they're so in inundated with the rough, they're going to be taken back and not like judge me on the Sonics or anything like that. They'll just be like, yeah, we don't like it. I got to go. I'm out. Right. And that's uncomfortable spot to be in. So right. I was just discussing with Herb uh, the time when you, me and Jason Joshua went three ways on a and split the cost of a hitman to take care of someone that was a little married to the rough. You had done the rough, by the way. Yeah, and it was horrible, and you did the mix, and it was fantastic. <laughs> it got rejected, and, and, and man, he, got, he, 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 he saved, saved our ass. He, 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 behind the scenes, gave us his mix, no and we just kind of, I don't even think we tweaked your mix. I think we turned in your revised rough mix. I can't remember. You know what it was? It what? was a loud version of the rough. And oh, they, <laughs> that's right. That's how it that's, won. There you go. <laughs> and, it, and it was well received. Is, is so. this particular person still alive? Should we keep talking in code or can we just... Who knows? But... <laughs> that means keep talking in code. Yeah, that's but you what know you what? I'm happy, I'm happy for the experience. I got to, you know, that yeah, was one you know of what? the first, first times we got to link up in person. And, you know, yeah. I got to learn. This was before Pensado's place, so all the secrets were down on the internet. So I was very happy about that. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's crank up Dave's athletic arm here. How's that right arm? I knew we had an elbow injury. Did you get it worked on? Well, I'm ambidextrous. I can you can pitch either uh -oh. way. Both ways. Oh, then let's throw left-handed. So let, let, let's tee up batter's box and see how Dave throws left-handed. Okay. You, you, you ready, Mr. I'm ready. You ready? All right, hold on. Pitch away, sir. Kazoo. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just got, you know, hey, got to throw a curveball once in a while. Right. Piano, okay. acoustic piano. Uh, tracker compressor from Crane Song. Nice. Um, strings. Uh, API 550Bs. You do know you're on my side, right? Stop yeah. complimenting him. I <laughs> Bass. Oh, not a lot. Not a lot. I try not to do too much. Very good. Snare. Mm. Mog, the, the new, the four band Mogs. Oh, okay. The UAD, yeah. the, the real one or UAD? I have the real one, but I use, I mean, if I got 18 snares in the song, I'm going to use the ones. <laughs> yeah, Cliff Mog's a favorite. Background yeah. vocals. Um, just a, a little bit of SSL EQ. Uh, uh, horns. Ooh. Uh, 414 microphones. Uh, I don't know. Stereo bus. SSL bus compressor and dangerous backs EQ. Oh, I haven't used that yet. 808. Oh, the, I haven't used the plugin yet, but I got the hardware one is fantastic. Oh, you do? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. 808. Um, I've been actually using Waves Vitamin on that, on a lot of the new uh, TI records. Uh, it's the cheat button, man. I, I, I don't, I gotta be honest. 
I can't believe my partner is like like encouraging and inside and so those, those inciting just, with those are just supporting sound. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him that was a pretty good pretty good throw because that's a brand new plug-in. Mm -hmm. um, reverb. Oof. I I have a PCM ninety one I use a lot, but that's, I also like the piece of junk. Don't count next. <laughs> uh, EMT one forty. Okay. Yeah. Good comeback. Delay. Um, rest in peace, Echo Farm. Or, uh, <laughs> uh, EP thirty four, or yeah, the the UAD, the the tape delay. I like okay. that one. And the Cooper Time Cube. Ah. You know what? STK, the first studio that I ever worked at, had a real two Cooper Time Cube. I had. Oh, I man. thought it was just a garden hose in a box. I didn't even respect it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he won her. I'm conceding. Well, it was a duel for a little while, and then he hit that big one off the back of the wall. I know. And, what uh, can you do? Nothing, Smiles just, walking. Be, be gracious in defeat. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> well, let's keep it going and introduce our corner office dude. I call him White Sun. He calls me Black Dad. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Chongor Gans. Chongor, you got some questions for our guest? Yeah, let's rock it. This uh, first one's from uh, Luke Icard. What's your most unique miking placement, and what led to the discovery of that technique? Damn, oh, good question. Well, I'd say the most interesting one that I've ever come across, I can't claim it as my own, but I've definitely used it since, was a ballad vocal in a really huge live space. They had a uh, 47, you know, up close, and then a stereo C24, like 20 feet back on a gate, and the two mics were summed together so that when the ballad vocalist would open up, it would blend in more of the room sound. It was the coolest thing I've ever heard. Wow. Wow. Really cool. <laughs> Give us another one, Chongor. This next oh, one's from on, Brent. On. We just had some history made there. That was pretty <laughs> impressive. Uh, that was pretty impressive, Miles. It's been impressive. I, I, again, I can't claim it as my own, but I've, I've tried it out several times since. And, and by the way, Luke, Question asker, send me some batter's box questions, man. I like you. Uh, 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 <laughs> all right, Sean Gore, fly away. From Brent, when you track vocals, do you put effects in the artist's headphones or do you leave it dry? Does it depend on the artist and how does it affect the final performance? Damn, these are good questions. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, it definitely depends on the artist because I'll have a conversation with them about that before we cut any vocals. I have the same conversation about auto-tune and steer them away from auto-tune. But, you know, if they like a lot of verb and they feel like that's really important, I will, of course, give it to them. You know, anything that they need to be comfortable and do the vocal they want. But if I start seeing problems that I think are created by them not hearing themselves well enough, I might be like, hey, let's try a version like this and dial it back down. Because sometimes they feel like they need a lot of effects because they want it to sound like a final record, but they need to be able to concentrate on their own performance. So you got to scale it accordingly. But then other times they would only try out things because they have so much effect. So you have to kind of like live in both worlds and a little bit of give and a little bit of take. A lot of psychology. Cool, one more Chongor. From Christian Samper. If you're given a single guitar track, what's your approach for using it in the mix? Will you stereo pan them, create a double, et cetera? Right, if it's just one and there's, only, and there's nothing else doing that kind of same harmony and rhythm, I'll get that joker as wide as I can. I like a lot of slap delay or something like that to create fake stereo and uh, you know fill that thing right up. Very cool. Now, now, where is TK's behind? Is he lurking around somewhere in the studio? He's creeping, man. I don't know where he is. I've been waiting for him to I, he, pop through that door all day. I was day. hoping he'd say hello to us, but I, I'll text him after the show. Um, well, Miles, in the interim, um, just wanted to get your take on this notion that we celebrate um, folks who sometimes don't get celebrated, this new hybrid. It's not really new, but it, the award is new where you know, if you're gonna to create today, you, you're a little bit of an engineer, and you're a little bit of a producer, and you're a little bit of an artist, and you're a little bit of a lot of things, uh, or what I call the new normal. You think this award show is a good idea? Well, somebody thinks that award show is Whoa. a good idea. Oh, wait, lean so, into the camera. Uh, oh, Whoa, look at that. <laughs> what's up, fellas? Look, look there TK, you go. TK, what's up? Awesome to see you guys. Asking you shall receive. We have the guys out polishing Mr. Walker's platinum record, so Come on. you know. There you go. <laughs> Well, I, you used to do that for me, remember, TK? <laughs> Absolutely. Pops my go, cardboard records. Lean, lean down into the shot a little bit more, TK. There you go. There, there, you, go. there, there you, go. you go. How are you? Give the people I'm what fantastic. How's my buddy doing here? Uh, uh, you know, uh, flames. Miles, <laughs> Going man. Down in flames. Um, he was. 
<laughs> but uh, he redeemed himself with our, our little batter's box thing. He kind of cleaned Dave's clock a little bit on batter's box. So, yeah. Uh, you guys are a tough crowd. Uh, how you been, man? You been good? Awesome, awesome. I'll leave you guys to it. Hey, wait a minute before you leave. Okay. Tell the world about the time you were my assistant. You were better than me, and we were doing a band from Florida, and I just said, TK, you just do it. I'll just, I'll be your assistant. My, one of my favorite, I actually told the story yesterday, one of my favorites today was when uh, you and I co-mixed a record for Atlantic, uh -huh. back uh, when dinosaurs were on the earth. Uh -huh. And um, uh, you'd mix a little bit, you'd uh, leave a name on the SSL, we had to guess each other's names, but oh, that was my favorite that. time. One of I the only the time I cigar. I remember Cigar? Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I, well, it's not. It's a public show here, so I won't even bother. <laughs> anyway, I do, but that's one of my favorite times. Yeah, we had a good time. I miss Tom Wright, you know. Good grief. Awesome guy. All right. Hey, thanks, TK. Thank you very much. Good you to see enjoy. you, TK. Thanks. Thank silent, you, uh, TK runs Silent Sound in Atlanta, the finest studio in Atlanta. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So, so uh, Miles, you think the Spence Auto Awards thing is a good concept? Herb, it's fantastic. I mean, you know, I think awards for engineers as well as like other aspects of the music industry are really fantastic because it's something, you know, we're kind of the behind the scenes if you want, and we've all chosen to be here, so that's okay. Yeah. And we're probably not gonna toot our own horn a lot, so it's our turn, you know we're what I mean? I think it's fantastic. We're gonna do a lot of tooting. Oh, right? the whole, the whole show is based on tooting everybody's <laughs> horn, no question. No, no it's good because it, it'll help motivate people and I like, you were just speaking about it earlier on, the Air Award, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. I think that's a really excellent one because, you know, hopefully the, you know, the recipient will be on this show years later and, you know, that's really, really great. So I think it's, it's great that you're paying attention to you, everybody you know, in all aspects. What's fascinating about it from our perspective is that is the award that has been talked about the yeah, most true. out of all the awards. And I, I would submit that in celebrating audio in general and not just records and music, um, first of all, if you guys don't do your job, there is nothing. There's nothing for That's us so to, true. there's no joy, there's no emotion, there's no, you're also the last stop before commerce. If you don't do your gig, it doesn't yeah. happen. And four years ago, we decided, forget that not being known about, we're gonna talk about it. And it's That's been great. rewarded in great ways. Um, the reason That's I great. ask you, Miles, is that your opinion is so valuable um, and we just keep confirming and love what we're hearing that people are digging it. We talked to Luca Pretolisi earlier today mm -hmm. and his, re his response was so interesting. It was a big EDM figure and he says when he travels and he's running around, he's in other countries, he hears people talking about it. And as much as, you know, we love that for us, it's really about how the community has embraced itself and, and moving forward. So on June 28th, if you're available, we'd love to have you here, be our guest. Um, your, your fans and audience would love to see you. We'll talk about that off air. In the interim, thanks so much for joining us. Um, Thank you guys for having me, man. I appreciate it so oh, much. Thank and you, we're going to bug you. We're going to have you a lot more. Just just and, know that. Just please you know, understand you, you that. You only got to ask once. I'm there. Cool, <laughs> Miles. Thanks. Dave, take us home. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, it was good to see some of my friends, uh, which reminds me, uh, mixing isn't a solo sport, it's a team sport. And as you're starting out and you're going along your way and you're getting skills and moving up the food chain, it's so much easier and so much better and so much fun with a couple of good friends that enjoy and share the experience uh, with the same passion you do. I had uh, a lot of guys that helped me out along the way and, and I wouldn't be here without all that help. Mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to that, it's a good thing to know. I'll see you next week. <laughs>